Hey guys, welcome back to part two of my starting tips for scum. Now, all these tips are totally fresh. They're not in the first one, but if you haven't seen the first starting tips, I suggest you go and check it. This is aimed at the people just literally just starting to play scum. Now, all these tips are questions that have been asked in comments or on stream. That's why I put them all together, um, basically to save me having to repeat the same answers all the time, if anything. Uh, if it helps anyone at all, then great, leave a comment below. The, for the map, which I say in the actual video, you can get it from my Discord, it shows some locations as well, and the link is below for that, but I'll repeat that again later on. Now, another one that people keep asking is, how do you open cans of food? It's actually quite easy. All you have to do is right click. You can use a can opener, you can use a stone knife, anything. Now, take this, click it with your left click, then go back up to that, left click whatever you're going to use to open it, then right click back in the can, and open. Simple as that. Um, this is something that I actually struggled with at first. It's a bit complicated. Then just press eat. That's it. Uh, it's as simple as that. Um, I know it might seem a bit over complicated for what it is, but it's that simple. You just have to click the can and a device to actually open it. If you get a can opener, even better, but you can use a knife stone knife you can even use the scissors as well so bear that one in mind if you do come across cans of food just get two small stones make a small stone knife and do it that way next is one a lot of people have asked me as well now the crafting menu you'll see there are different colors red yellow and gray in the boxes now red means you have no parts to make that item yellow means you have some parts to make that item and grey means you can't make that item yet because you don't have the skill level. Now, depending on the points that you picked at the start, it will give you intelligence of what you can actually make. And as you progress further, these will start opening up as well. Now, this system may change further into it and there might be more stuff added to it as well. In fact, they've already confirmed that that's going to be the case. So just bear in mind, before you start gathering all the resources for this, Make sure you can actually make it first. Now, another quick one is if you're making something and you think I don't have any of these parts at all, these little buttons here give you an option to change. So you can actually change what it is there. Now, say for rope, you can use anything to cut. You don't just have to use the first thing it's shown. Now I'm trying to find another one which is a quite a good example. So the, the small improvised bag, if it shows this, if you don't have the wire, click along and you'll see you can use the thread, rope, improvised rope, hatchet, the little improvised hatchet, and a knife and a stone knife. So don't think that's the only things you can use. You can flick through them as well and change to try and use different materials. That's very key to remember because um, a lot of people will just try to find those exact items and run around like headless chickens and not be able to find them. So make sure you click through and just check the other options that are available for that item. Now this one I've been asked actually quite a lot and it's uh, surprising to be honest. People keep asking how you run Initially, when you start the game, it's a scroll wheel and your mouse, you'll scroll it up to go faster and back to go slower. Now, I changed this map-wise and changed it to my tab button to go faster and choose my scroll wheel to go slower. Now, something that's quite simple, but someone who doesn't use that technique in a game, I suppose, can find it a bit weird at first. Um, I suggest maybe trying what I've done and use a tab button to go faster. Now... I think it's pretty critical that you get all your keys mapped out properly. I mean, my map button is one of the buttons on my mouse, so I can quickly get it up. I don't have to mess around. Um, I've also changed my first person to E, because I don't use a lot of the peak to the right at all, in fact. So I've changed it straight to there. So map out your buttons to what you're comfortable with, um, because it can make all the difference, especially if you're fighting zombies. Now, some people might find themselves stuck in a mode where they can't stop unfocusing a zombie. It's because you're in fight mode. Now, if you hit V, you'll quickly come out of that mode and you can move free range again. But when you're fighting like a zombie, it just stays directly looking at them. 
so it's one to keep a note of. I kept having a lot of trouble with that at first. I didn't realise it actually enters like a fight mode focus. So always hit V if you know you're just going to get owned by the puppets or the zombies. Now another one people don't actually know. If it rains or you fall into a river, your clothes get seriously wet and it can actually hamper you and cause you to go slower and catch like, disease and stuff. So if you do get wet, create a campfire. I have a video already on how to make a campfire. But if you're struggling with the campfire and you can't use the drill, which a lot of people are saying they can't, the fire drill, it's because your survival skill isn't high enough yet. So you may have to use a lighter instead. Now to dry your clothes, the easiest and quickest way to do it is literally take them off, put them in the ground next to the fire, like so. Just leave it all down on the ground and it will dry over time. Now different materials dry quicker than others. If you're wearing a Kevlar helmet, that will dry obviously quicker because it's metal. Now don't try and think you can put wet clothes over dry clothes because the system in the game actually detects that and the dry clothes will become wet. So it's one to bear in mind. But again, when you're doing this, make sure no puppets are around you or players. Just keep wary of it. Then what I tend to do is I press left alt and I just keep looking to my side behind me so I can see what's happening. But I'm still getting the effect of the fire without moving. Oh, it's also probably better to crouch as well just to try and keep yourself down. If you can, try and find some rocks and go in between the rocks. If you do it at night, some people might see it um, because of the light. So bear that in mind as well. Now, no doubt you've probably seen all the videos where everyone keeps showing you the airfield and how it's the best place to get loot and the easiest place. Strictly, it is the best place for loot because of the volume, but there's other places. Don't put yourself in danger of going to the airfield straight away. Now, you see where I'm in the map, bottom left. There's loads of these little military bases everywhere. I'm going to put the map in my Discord announcements so you can download it straight from my Discord. Now, the link is below. These are all over the map. Now, you tend to find that there are little off-roads from the main roads. Now, they are heavily guarded, however, all the AI stick to the same route. Now, there is a mech in here, but we'll watch its route. As you can see, it is running to the side now. We'll literally just find a split in the gate. Run down. He can't see me. Close the door. And that's you in. Now, see, I've already looted this. But this has got tactical gear in here, this is going to have ammunition, guns, all the stuff that you need to progress. So don't feel the airfield's the only place you can go. As I said, the map will be in my own Discord. You can go in, download it, don't have to stay, just download it, take what you need and shoot back out. Now if you're starting out, chances are you're going to need to be able to run fast and get your stamina back fast as well. Now a quick tip from me. Is keep your age to like well, mid 20s and drop it to really thin. This will give you the optimal speed and stamina to come back. Now, you put tattoos on, do it whatever you want this, this side, it's up to you. Now, come to this area, melee and that don't really bother. I mean, if you're just starting off, you want to have your running and endurance up to quite a decent level. Now, I always put my endurance up quite high. If I'm just like practicing or running around the map just trying to find things. Now, survival, put it up high as well, as high as you can go. Because you're going to want to make sure that you can craft a lot of the things. Because just survival element, that will allow you to craft a lot of the actual lower items. Now, endurance, survival, melee weapons and running, that's probably the key ones you want to have when you are actually starting the game. Stealth, have that up as well, as if you can, because that means you can hunt animals a lot easier. Then the rest of them, just whatever points you've got left with things, just pull them up, see what you can do with them. If you take anything else up, then do it. Um, but as you get into the game and you start learning the game properly, then you can start playing about with this. I mean, you can see there's still things to be added to this. Heavy weapons, weapon throwing, driving, motorcycling, piloting, sailing, so there's a lot still to happen. So guys, quite if you are starting out, Try to go for like those kind of settings simply because you're going to have to run away quite a lot and get used to how the game is. I mean, if we go back, if you see, if you go to that, your endurance is going to be terrible. So if we go to the next one, it's not even going to let you do that much endurance. You can't do it. It's just impossible. So your character is extremely important. Even if you're muscular, 
it will also affect what you can do with endurance and running because more muscle equals more fat so just be bear that in mind when you're doing it and you see your survival can't come up because you're more muscular but I seem to find that having it down here just seems to work for me um, because I like to use what, range weapons etc but guys it's just a quick tip you'll work this out yourself as time goes on and see what what you actually prefer now you can have it directly in the middle and just have a, a split of everything if you like so just have like everything just up a little bit but as I say I personally think you're going to have to run quite a lot when you're learning the game especially from the puppets so it might be worth having it at a state where you can learn the game and safely get away from them so guys next if you're trying to kill animals the best thing to do is try and sneak up now your stealth skill matters quite a lot for this so if your stealth skill is quite low chances are you probably won't get it it's probably better to use a gun but you can use a spear we're gonna try and use a shotgun There you go, done. Now just chop it up, like so. Right click and take the hide. The hide is probably the most important part of the whole thing that you're trying to get here. I go la 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 la